First, uh, we will start with all the way I am in communication with people in Australia and New Zealand. And I know that's a bit far away from Sweden. In fact, you have to go straight down this way to get there. But they are doing very well. Uh, I write letters back and forth to the OT groups there and the people who are doing delivery there. And the first group that started off last year was uh, run by Eddie Mace. I don't know if you know Eddie and John Mace, but anyway, they are two very OT brothers that didn't like the way things were going in Australia. And they broke away from the church, or the quote church, as we call it now, in quotes, huh? And they started up an advanced organization in Western Australia. And they were heavily attacked, I mean, legally, uh, with police uh, reports, uh, the neighbors were called up, uh, their businesses were called up, uh, they had private investigators, they had legal threats, all this kind of stuff. Well, that was last year. That was not even a year ago. It was about one year, almost one year. They were there before David Mayo was in Santa Barbara, California. Before that, Eddie Mace and John Mace had set up already to go against the suppression that was on the lines coming through the quote church. Today, they have moved into their second location, which is a much larger building. I don't have a picture of it with me, but it looks something like uh, one of the large shops you would see out in the streets in, uh, in uh, Halmstadt or Gothenburg or Malmo. And it has a large, long uh, training room and many auditing rooms and a very nice reception and a parking area out in front. And they also have another building uh, across the street, not far away, where they do individual uh, advanced levels with knots, auditing, and confidential materials and so on like that. And they are sending out regularly magazine and a newsletter and telling of all their wins and the successes they're having there. And that's in West Australia. In East Australia, around Sydney, there is a delivery group started up there also. And they are doing consulting auditing, and they hope to open up their advance levels very shortly. In New Zealand, there's also a group that are doing about the same thing. They're still small. They haven't gotten as big as having their own building yet but they are also having much success in New Zealand. Now, the people there are totally convinced that all of the trouble they're having has come from the RTC and the uh, takeover group, shall we call them, in California. And they are working it so that the Australian government understands what has happened. Now, that's a simple statement, but when you happen to know that, <clears throat> I won't mention any names, but one of the OTs that's on their lines, on the, the free zone lines there, is a secretary to one of the most important government officials in Australia. You will maybe help you to understand why the RTC has not been able to shut them down or even make them shrink. They're just expanding all the time. They have one of their, their own OTs are right up there in the government. So that's a big help. Now, as we come across uh, around the world there, from South Africa, we only had word that there's one delivery group down there and we don't have much other news. It's just a breakaway group that we're doing auditing. However, in Europe, we have, of course, much news, as you probably know. The Spanish um, uh, organization, OT organization down there, have set up a, an academy where they're doing TRs and meter drills and basic uh, study, for, because most of the Spanish uh, uh, Scientologists did not get up the bridge very far under the, quote, church. 
and now they're starting their basics there. There's about 25 or 30 of them that are becoming trained as auditors and trained as executives so that they may in themselves start up a much larger organization. There's also plans in Spain for setting up an international type organization there, which would be equivalent or even better than what you know as the flag land base. That means that it would not only have training and auditing and very highly classed auditors, but it would also have courses for artists, for uh, <clears throat> people who are in business, for people that wanted to create a new product in society, musicians, things that will help these people make a start in the fourth dynamic. Then in France, we have uh, in this lower area of France around Toulouse, there are several breakaway groups. In fact, the whole of South France is out of the, quote, church's hands. And they are delivering <clears throat> rather quietly and so on to the, each other. They haven't really uh, asked for an event or linked up with us too much, although they write letters every now and then. But we find out that some of them are being sent for their upper levels up to Scotland. And they're up there in Candacraig at the uh, AAC Candacraig. So the French people are going up there. It's a pattern they've established, I don't know. In Paris, we find out there's only uh, a small delivery group there, uh, just one or two auditors that are in the free zone, and they're very quiet and very cautious. However, we do have information from the org there, how the, quote, church org is doing. <clears throat> it has suffered very badly from the events in the recent years. And we happen to know whether this was connected or not, I do not know, but a bomb was set off in the org in the, of the quote church there several weeks ago. And luckily, I don't think anyone was hurt, but it destroyed a lot of their property and caused a fire. And I think it was done because of somebody happened to be on staff that was involved in drugs. That's the rumor line, that's what it says. But we do know that the recruitment is getting really Shall we say they're just scraping the bottoms of the barrels right now? Actually going under the barrels and picking up a few worms from the ground. <clears throat> we have, I have a lot of similar type reports that the ethics officer, for instance, of the New York organization one year ago was a wanted criminal by the police. And uh, he had to, finally had to give up his post to go to jail. Uh, this is the kind of, quote, church that's being run. Anyway, in Switzerland, we have, we have all levels being delivered there in Switzerland. And it's a very interesting thing in Switzerland. You will find high up in a mountain in one place in Switzerland, there is a little group of OTs, about six of them, that are helping to fight the Theta War against the Black Thetans. And uh, they are up there, and they're actually doing mutual protection on each other and and canceling out beams and bad intentions by other beings that are working against Scientology. And they're very successful at it. And they know where it's coming from, too. <laughs> Basil. <laughs> so anyway, Switzerland, they're doing well. <clears throat> I think that uh, Eric can probably tell you more of what's happening in Germany, but most of you have heard that a few weeks ago at the German event we had down there. The RTC made a very serious mistake. They tried to arrest one of our uh, members, and they succeeded for 24 hours. But within the next 24 hours, 100 policemen descended upon the org and went into seven executives' houses and took several tons of documents from them, in which they're going to have to explain how they broke about 30 to 31 German laws in the very near future. And so the government is not very happy with the quote church down there, although they're very happy with the free zone. And they have given everyone there a sort of, okay, go ahead, set up, do Scientology, it's fine. We just don't like all this illegal stuff that's going on from these quote church that comes from California. So the quote church is not doing too well in Germany. There are also delivery groups in Frankfurt uh, Hamburg, Stuttgart, and there's 23 people on the comm course in a town nearby Frankfurt that's all on the 
in the independent side. Now, in Sweden, you know best. I don't know all of it, but I'm sure you will tell. Your own speakers will tell that. In Denmark, I'm sure that Per Garstrom can tell. They're right at the... Per Garstrom, when I say him, he is not okay. Now, per Schutz will tell. I had him on my mind recently because we were, we were testing him out. But uh, Per Schutz will tell us about that. And uh, <clears throat> as we go over to England, I can say that there, I'm very pleased to see what is happening there. Uh, the idea of the cottage industry has come back, uh, the little small industry, you know, and it looked to me like somebody took an org board, you know, regular Scientology org board, and they went with a pair of scissors and they cut out all of the little departments, you see, and then they threw them around like this. But funnily enough, it works very well. And in East Grinstead, for instance, if you want to have something typed or something uh, copied, then you have to go to the little piece of the HCO org that is sitting in East Grinstead. <laughs> and they have free zone people there that give free zoners a discount for doing the typing and copying, just like HCO Aries secretary would do in their office in the org board, you see? <laughs> and then you have another group that does nothing but Div 6 introductory lectures. And they have a little piece cut off of Div 6 over here, you see? And then you have other people that are doing just training, and they're just doing they're in the training department, just train people, that's all. And then there's other people that are doing comm course, you know, like an introductory course in Div 6. <clears throat> and then there's others that are doing uh, regular grades auditing and Dianetics auditing and so on. And then there's others that do the advanced levels and knots. So you can get your, <clears throat> your entire route through the bridge there in East Grinstead by going into many very beautiful little English houses, you know, stuck away into various places. <clears throat> and in London, a similar thing is happening. We just have the, the sheet come down, the, the paper come down the other day, showing about 10 different locations you can get various services in London. And as you all know, in Candacraig, in Scotland, that's where Robin Scott, the famous Robin Scott, went back there. He's now receiving newspaper uh, every week there about there's a story in there about him of the newspaper some of them most of them are very good about him You know showing he is the he is the Scotsman, you know who struck out for truth and freedom and so on a picture of him and his lovely wife in the castle You know and, and he's he's like a, becoming a national hero up there and he had recently they had a special day in Scotland for uh, celebrations and the Royal uh, Scottish bagpipe band, you know, the ones with the <laughs> these bagpipers all came and marched and they marched into his uh, place and played there and they had drinks and everything like that and there's very good press about this. And so he's regarded now as one of the, as I say, see his, his whole idea, he read Battlefield Earth, right? And he, he, he mocked himself up as he liked the idea of what uh, Robert the Fox was doing, you know, the Scottish, uh, the Scottish friend of Johnny in uh, Battlefield Earth. And he was always doing the raids, you know, and helping out and doing this and getting the Scots all together. Well, that's, that's what Robin Scott likes. He likes that. Because last Christmas, I went up there with Mary Sylvie. We were invited for Christmas and New Year's. And we gave him a big sword big sword like that with the phoenix inscribed on it, the words to a song called the phoenix, about a phoenix rising to freedom, you know? And he has that hanging up in his, in his uh, manor in the big house. So he's doing quite well up there and he has now, when I was up there in Christmas and he had invited people, right? Now these were invited people, so we came up there he had 24 people there sitting around a big long table and eating and so on. Well now, it's only his staff there, which is only about six people, but he has 40 people around the table, 40. And they're all taking services there, the rest of them. About 30 of them are taking services there. We recently compared, very quietly because 
In the free zone, we don't push stats like they do in the orgs. We push products and people getting happy, good results from their services. But we did a secret comparison in England. It was done by the OT committee in England. We compared the stats of what the quote church was doing in England and what the free zone was doing in England. And they did it on the basis of, <laughs> as you well know, all these things, you know, well done auditing hours, <laughs> number of students on course, number of OT completions, that kind of thing. You, you understand what I'm talking about, stats. And they did those and they found out for the first time that the, in the independent free zone, the stats were higher than they were in all the churches added up in England. So they all felt very good, you know, or they didn't like to brag about stats. They said, we're not RTC, we're not gonna say, get your stats up, you know. But they did say, hey, it's great to know that we're producing more than they are now, and they're going very low. There is only about, last we heard, there was only about seven people on the quote briefing course at the quote church. And uh, the similar statistics apply elsewhere. There's one org, I think it's Plymouth, is about to close down. There's no one there. So they're just shrinking. Anyway, that answers that question. There's a lot of free zone. In the, oh, in the United States, of course, I didn't mention them. We don't get much accurate reporting out of the United States because there are no OT committees there. And because in the United States, having borne the, the thrust of the entire scenarios themselves and with the cooperation of the national newspapers and the FBI and everybody else over there, they are really still in a bit of a confusion, except for people like David Mayo and the people that are actually helping the free zone over there, which is, should be a lot more people doing this. But anyway, we do know that David Mayo has something like six to 8,000 people on his lines in his CF that he writes to. And his place is always full of students and pre-clears coming along. And similarly, all the other groups that we know of, like Larry West down in San Diego and the guys in Denver at Survival Services, or now it's called uh, something more like survival, something, a advanced survival services or something. But they're, they're expanding as well in Denver, Colorado. Uh, and there's several other groups in California that are all doing very well. The only thing we haven't heard from recently is the East Coast. We don't know if anything's happening for the free zone on the East Coast of America. We do know, however, we've had people also, I heard you had people that went to flag here recently in uh, Clearwater. And we heard that one, that the main thing is they were interested in doing down there was sec checking people. And even on advanced levels, they were still finding out how much money the person had and then they were allowing him to have, you know, ordering him to have so many sec checks in between his next levels or his next uh, intensive. So they were just using up the money and many people uh, they came back to England and they were totally ARC broken with the whole idea. And most of these were people that had stayed in the church because they had already given the money. They had already money at flag. And then they went down there and they came back totally ARC broken anyway. They thought they would, ha ha, I have money there, I'll go get my service. And they went to get their service, but they didn't get it. And one of them was, who was very much ARC broken was a large publisher called Lillian Collins. I don't know if you've ever read a book in English that says on the bottom, Collins Publishing Company. Anyway, she was the heiress of that company. And she went down there she was not in the, in the independent. She was not in the free zone. She had so much money, she didn't care. She went down there and offered them a simple thing. She said, look, your prices are too high. Your book prices are too high. My family's been in publishing for a long time. I print your books in paperback and make the prices low so you can get more people into Scientology. How about that? She was there on knots. I mean, she was, you know, doing high-level stuff. You know what they did? Critical of management. <laughs> Critical of management. Sec checker. They sec checked her for another 50 or 100 hours. And when she came back, she joined the free zone. 
and so did her daughter. <laughs> and so now that whole family is in the free zone. So anybody that is silly enough now with all this evidence that's been coming along to think that Scientology is still being delivered in the church is totally mistaken. It, uh, the last vestiges of tech were being delivered there when David Mayo was still on the lines of senior CS. And after he went off the lines, it was not being delivered there standardly anymore. And many people have asked also, well, they say things like, like, well, how did Ron let this happen? You know, or so on like that. And you can always look at them and say, let what happen? Scientology's still here. There's a lot of people out here still doing it, and it's free this time. Free from control. Everyone has a chance now to do exactly what Ron did, start up Scientology in their own area. I would say, if you had, could not figure out a way, and he did give you this problem in his policy quite a lot, he told you in there, in the policy, he said one of the most difficult things to figure out is how a person who is ruling, or a king, or a dictator, or whoever it is, if he's got a good regime, a good kingdom going, a benevolent dictatorship even, how does he succeed himself? How does the next person come along? How to do that? It's always been a problem in policy, and for that you've seen many solutions. You've seen councils, committees, networks, all these various things were attempts to how do you take the hat of LRH and make sure it persists, right? And this is not only a problem in the third dynamic of Scientology, it's a problem in the world. I mean, your history of every country in Europe, you just go back through it and you find out that there was a good king named Olaf but the next guy was a shit. See? And the same thing in every country. Now you go into other churches, you find the same thing. I read a history of the Catholic Church before I came over here from the Encyclopedia Britannica. And do you know that in 1100, uh, 900 years ago, maybe you remember it, but there were two popes. There was one in Rome, and there was one in Avignon, France. Two popes. Now, if you know the Catholic religion, you know there can only be one pope, right? <laughs> so, of course, something had to happen. And guess what they did? <laughs> it was so funny. It was hilarious. Even the Encyclopedia Britannica thought it was funny. One pope in Avignon, excommunicated, or declared as P, huh? all of the people in the other church from Rome, right? The other guy said, you can't do that, and he declared all the people in the Avignon church and all the Pope and everybody, SPs, excommunicate them. <laughs> so for a period of a few years there, there were absolutely no Catholics on the planet. <laughs> they were all out. <laughs> And that was the joke the Encyclopedia Britannica made. It said, for a short period, there were absolutely no Catholics on the planet. <laughs> Each side excommunicated the other side, right? <laughs> Perfect duplication as is in this, right? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> it's interesting as to how that problem was solved. A, another force, actually from the Habsburg line over in uh, Austria, realized that couldn't go on like this, right? So <laughs> he, he created a third pope, <laughs> number three, and he called the other two guys there before he let it be known, right? He called the other two guys there and had the third pope excommunicate both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, anyway, it went on like that for a century or so. But anyway, you can understand that we're not the only church that has had takeover problems, okay? But 
we, and in fact, it happened in the Buddhist religion as well. So we're not the only one that had that. How do you succeed yourself? In other words, the question is, in the Catholic's mind would be, once Jesus has gone on to the cross, how do you figure out who the next guy is to carry it on? Or once Peter and all the disciples have died, who should run it? You see? Wow. How do you do that? And once LRH goes off management lines, how do you run Scientology? Well, I think Scientology has found the solution because it had the right tech. And the tech produced the products of people who were clear in OT and knew policy. They know policy. And it produced the results. So when LRH decided to retire from management lines, and believe me, people ask me all the time, say, where is LRH, the body of LRH? I, I don't know, but I do know this. LRH is so OT that if he wants to keep himself hidden from you for a long time, where his body is and so on, he will do it. And he's very good at it. But anyone can communicate with him spiritually, right? That's not the same thing. I mean, it's different between the Thetan and the body, but most people are asking, where is his body? I don't know. And not, you know, I don't know anybody that does. So anyway, it's a good game. I hope I can do that as well too when I am uh, up, that, up that level. But he said, how do you do this? Turn over. How, how can we keep Scientology going? The networks have always been arguing with each other. The, the uh, committees and all that, they're too slow. They don't really work. They can't make decisions, you know. There's always differences happening here and here. And uh, management is always demanding the stats without looking at the products. And there's evaluations uh, that's not going well because they make wrong evaluations. And then somebody gets on top and tells them to make the evaluation this way. And then the ethics goes this way and it goes in and out. Ah. Well, the best thing to do is turn it over to those that are strong enough and OT enough and knowledgeable enough to make it work. Because the end result, Scientology is not going to be known as an organization like the Catholic Church. It's going to be known for its products. See? The products. It's going to be known for its products. Clears, OTs, people who can handle things, and so on. And that way, it becomes more or less a thing that everyone can have, everyone can use. All right? Therefore, it is much more than a religion. It is not just a religion, although that's the way it was started out. What it is, is the Thetans, shall we say, his own textbooks, his own library, his own information, his own knowledge. Every one of you here that studies Scientology, you carry it with you forever. You don't lose it. That's one thing you find out. I mean, you just don't lose it at all. Once you know the data, you know it. Once you get the FNs and you understand the cognitions that, that you have on the grades and so on, you never lose them, right? Everyone that has had a result in Scientology, and you've talked amongst yourselves, you go back and you say, hey, I remember you. Man, I remember what I cognited on that grade. Oh, yeah, that was great. I remember this and this and this. The guy, he can have it again. He can have it again. They're always talking about their wins. They're always talking about the realizations. They're always talking about attainment of truth. And that is the difference between Scientology and any other organization. In Scientology, we go for the truth. The truth about the being, the truth about his past track, the truth about his his association with other beings, the truth about his future. We go for the truth. And when you get that, you have an as isness. You don't carry around boxes of mass with you and all kinds of problems and have to have large buildings sitting around with, with images in it and go in there and say, I pray to the God of the E-meter that I might have a good session. <laughs> and my meter does not become discharged during the session, and, uh, you know, things like that. And I pray to the God of ethics that my stats will be up this week. <laughs> and we're not doing that, you see? We're not doing that. We're not doing that. No, everyone has it. 
for themselves. That is the product. It's each person becomes a product, but also becomes the possessor, the owner of all the knowledge and all the tech. That's what they become. Therefore, the best way to carry on Scientology is to carry it on in each individual that is a product of Scientology. See? So what you may look at it very humorously from LRH's viewpoint, you see? Now let's separate out LRH hat of researching and discovering and codifying all the technology and policy. That's his hat here. And here's LRH, the, the individual, the person with his own interests and so on like that. Now, let's just take this part here, because he may be as he wishes to be. But let's take the part he did here. And this is the part he's asking you to study, and this is the part he's asking you to cognite on, because this is the truth. He's found, he said, it may not even be what I would want to have in the universe. It may not even be something I, I like to have there, but that's what I found, and that's what it is. So you study it, and you go, yeah, that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah, ha <laughs> great, yeah, fantastic, boom. Like that. <laughs> you have a few cognitions. Three, four, four, five. Okay, you have five cognitions. <laughs> Thank you. Now, what happens to this data? What happens to all this knowledge? You are responsible to then give it out to others. This is the distribution cycle. Remember the distribution cycle? The org board goes around the spiral like that, huh? You come in at recognition, HCO, and you go through dissemination, treasury, tech, qual, into the public divisions, through them, right? And the policy says you come around to a higher level. We will all find ourselves on a higher level org board at the source cycle again. He said that, and it's in volume zero, first book of policy. Volume zero, the org board, the spiral, we will go through a distribution cycle, which we're going through right now, because the... But some people have already gone through the distribution cycle, they've received the knowledge, they've, it's been distributed to them, and now they can come around and start a new source cycle with the same knowledge here. They don't have to be LRH, you understand? They don't have to imitate him or be in his valence. All they have to do is have the integrity of LRH for this knowledge here and say, LRH found this, and I found it works, and therefore I give it to you, it works. And I started here for you. And that's what he wants when he says, I want you to wear my hat. Remember, he used to say, every post in the org is like a hat. Wear it as if I was wearing it. Wear the hat as if LRH was wearing it. Well, that's how you do it. Because all the years I've worked with him, I have found nothing except the fact that he follows his own policy and tech closer than anyone else I've ever seen. Every one of his handlings on the ship, every one of his technical CSs, everything he did in the years and years that I was able to observe him there when I worked on the ship was exactly for policy exactly protect. So when he says, wear the hat as if I was wearing it, he says, here's the, here's the hats, and he wrote them all out for us. So if we have that knowledge and we can pass it on to others, we can move around the org board, become the source in the area for the tech, the policy of LRH, and say, LRH found it, I am carrying it on to you because it works. And that is a truth line, that is a knowledge line, and that is a line that no one, no one can harm, no one can knock it out, no one can stop it, because that is the way to carry on through time, through space, through the future. That is the way LRH figured out to replace himself. How does he replace himself? with all of us <laughs> wearing his hat in our own area. And if you're just wearing it in the auditing area or the tech area, whatever area, it doesn't matter. If you just wear it, 
The whole thing will come. Around the planet will grow. Scientology will never be lost. It'll never be taken over. It'll never be changed. As long as the basic tech and policy carries on people wearing the hat as if LRH was wearing it. And in the future, you can never be fooled. Some people were fooled with this quote church. But you can never be fooled again because you'll know that if anyone comes with those types of actions which are not for policy and they're denying the use of policy and they're squirreling up the tech and they're messing up the actions that usually are found in an LRH org, then you know that they are not on this cycle of source. They're not on source. Therefore, that is not LRH policy, not LRH tech. It is not Scientology anymore. So what do you have now? You have the chance to become the source of Scientology and Dianetics in your area. And you have the chance to, of course, go up the bridge. You have the chance to actually create a new game, a new game. Because once you start doing the actions of tech and policy, you realize that you are now in a wonderful position of creating a new game in your area. You are. And then you're moving up to cause. It's an OT ability to create. So you move up, you're creating a game, you're becoming more cause, you're becoming more OT. I have said privately and then publicly a little bit, and then I say it here now, all the auditing does not take place in the auditing room. From my observation of what LRH did during his life and what is successful now, all the auditing does not take place in the auditing room. There is a time when you must come outside the auditing room as a Scientologist and take on the whole of the third dynamic, the fourth dynamic, and say, this is my auditing room now, this is my space, and here is the aberrated parts of it, and I'm going to handle those, and this is the question, bum, aha, and there is the answers, and there's the policy that will go in there and handle that bit of bank. All right, good. Now, over here, there's some more we got to handle, bum, and you're out there and you find out that you're auditing the third and fourth dynamic, and boy, wait a minute, you suddenly feel like, hey, now I know what LRH meant when he said, you know, if you apply policy to the environment around you, you will win, you will succeed, and if you don't, you won't. And if you apply tech, you will get people up the bridge, and you will go up the bridge. But if you don't, you won't. Because that is the truth line. That's all it is. It's not an opinion. It's nothing else but the agreements we made coming into the universe. We're now looking at them and getting all the aberrations off of them, and we're going back out. And we're getting more and more causative. And if people do not see it that way, if they try to control you, if they try to force you to do this, force you this, they're just trying to push you back down into a position of effect, effect point, where LRH has given the answer. This is what he intended, was that people should move to cause point. And now he's given us the chance, in a very short time, compared to the whole track, I think it's a very short time, nearly four years, I think that everyone now has the chance to become cause in their own area a source of Scientology and Dianetics, auditing on the third and fourth dynamic, handling things, making a new civilization here, and just moving it right on out through the sector and through the galaxy. Now, you will hear a lot of people from the United States, they come around and they say, we heard in the newspapers that LRH just was in it for the money, and Mary Sue is a criminal, and yeah, 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 and all of this. Listen, those people are still at effect. They didn't work with LRH for many, many years. They didn't watch him working 18 hours a day. I mean, if you were with LRH on the ship in those days, and Sven will tell you, you felt ashamed personally that you could not keep up with him. He worked more than any of us. All right. 
and he studied more, and he researched more, and he did CSing more, and he did incredible amounts of work for all of us to put the tech there and so on. By the time, before we even started the flag land base, we had over $100 million in Sea Org reserves for the use of building orgs, for the use of protecting Scientology in the world, and so on. If LRH was only interested in money, he didn't even need to go to the United States and have his son assassinated and his wife put into jail and his family broken up and the daughter of his, his granddaughter taken away from his daughter. He didn't have to do all of that. Before he went into the United States, he could have just said, okay, I'm going off to Bulgaria and I'm gonna, bob, I'm gonna bribe the police and all of that, and we all would have helped him. He said, great, how much you want? He says, 100 million, great, go ahead. Fantastic. He didn't do that. He said, all the attacks on us are coming from the United States. Let's invade the buggers and put Scientology there. Everybody said, yeah. And that's what he did. He put the flag land base right there in the United States. He started up the whole Cedars complex, put $25 million of the reserves into buying buildings in the Cedars complex and the enormous complex in Los Angeles. And he set up the film unit so he could get all of the tape, all of the tech down with a total filmed duplication of the correct TRs and everything so they could never be, never be altered. And he kept working 18 hours a day at it. So I think that these people that are coming from the United States, uh, or these rumors, these stories and so on, we know they were part of the scenarios by the enemies of Scientology to put in the newspapers and all of that. You've read my bulletin on that. It's obvious, number, it's number seven, the black PR scenario. It's still in it over there. It's up to Europe to show the way of standardness, on sourceness, and causativeness, and just keep booming over here. We just heard recently that the RTC, using a quote church, quote terms about quote ethics, they've declared all of Europe for them in liability. Huh. That means all their quote churches are in liability. Well, we think they're a little bit lower, actually. <laughs> Let's use the tech correctly, right? Many are in confusion, some are still in treason, uh, but they're way down there. So anyway, they're assigning them a wrong condition, but basically it shows something. It shows that they do know that something's going on over here. And what is going on over here is truth and real Scientology. And they can't handle it. You cannot handle it. There's no way you can, you can defeat the truth. There's no way you can defeat on source tech and policy. No way, as long as each person is taking responsibility. That's what they can't understand over there in RTC and in the U.S. and in the offices of COST, C-O-S-T, Church of Spiritual Training or Technology or something, with Sherman Linsky sitting up at the top, the Siberian squirrel. That's what his name means, Siberian squirrel. He, he can't handle it. Those FBI, MI6, KGB agents that's working for him cannot handle it. The rip-off money guys like David Miscavige and a few of the other guys around there cannot handle it. No matter with all their money and all their lawyers and all their private detectives in the world cannot handle it. They are going to fail because they're not on the truth line anymore. And they never were. And you know that, I know that. So there's nothing to be worried about at all. Just be very happy that you're actually one, that you have the chance. LRH was such a great genius that he gave the one answer of how to succeed himself. And we're the first people in Europe, Europeans and Australians were the first ones to cognite on it and start up Scientology again, real Scientology. And also that you're in an area, an environment where we've already gotten OT, OT committees, which is totally on policy groups in volume seven, started up so that it sort of protects the whole thi thing and keeps it coordinated with communication and warnings for you if something's like a coming down that we need to handle. Got all that set up. Europe is in very good shape. 
And Elridge said, just to show you his postulate in 1966, he said, if anything ever goes wrong in the United States, economically, politically, or militarily, then Europe must be the one to make Scientology survive. He said that, it has now happened, it is now true. And so, <laughs> I don't know, uh, anybody that predicts the future that very closely must really know what he's doing. So here it is, and we've all got the chance, and we all, I think, after living in this universe for so many quadrillions, all this track and everything like that, we've never had such a wonderful chance to keep on becoming a cause and keep on going up. Because I know many of you have worked for, have, well first, many of you have been leaders in the past. And many of you have also worked for leaders in the past. And I know, you look back on it, and it's like big wins. You had great win. You know, I used to be a, run this whole planet here, and I used to be a king here, and I used to do this, and you know, and I worked with these guys, and we did this, and yeah. But did you ever figure out how to keep it going through time? No. None of us did. None of us did. Well, now I think we got the answer. <laughs> we have the answer. LRH figured out how to keep the good times going. And the good times are going because he gave the hat to everyone. He says, yeah, here it is. Here's all the knowledge, all the tech, and that's what makes all the power. So you guys have it and do it. Trust us all. Give us the hat. We do it. And we also know another thing, that if you don't do it right, it won't work anyway. So the only way you can do it wrong and keep going is by enforcing it with a lot of private detectives and police and money it doesn't work. Sorry. That doesn't even work. So I think we owe a vote of thanks and appreciation to LRH for that. And I'd like to give him applause because in all things spiritual, no matter we're not a church exactly, we're a little bit higher than that maybe because churches are those things which are established on earth to venerate something in the spiritual universe. Huh? And they have to do this, this mess thing here. So, piece of mess with all kind of altars and buildings and com baskets and things that's all messed. But a church is a piece of mess which is there to venerate or to praise something in the spiritual universe. Or it may be an organization as well, but it still has to do with some more messy things. I think that we have a little higher level of attainment here. We have a higher level which is knowledge, truth spiritual understanding of each other and of theta in general. And those are the true things of power, the true things of the future, the true things that will keep us all on the winning throughout the future. And up spiral, as we all know, remembering back, we were, yeah, it was a little bit of a down spiral some places. We go back, the up spiral, we now have the way to do it. We have the way to do it. Stay on the road to truth. And for that road to truth, I'd like to thank Ella Rach. If you join me, just give him some applause for that. See, could be anywhere, right? <laughs> right.